Hi everyone. In the previous video, I have started this transistor bootstrap time based generator. And this is the circuit. We have seen how the transistors are acting before the gating pulse and after the application of gating pulse, also we have seen. And when the gating pulse is not applied, Q1 is in saturation. After the application of a negative gating pulse, Q1 comes into off state. So the capacity is having a chance to charge towards VCC. Okay, here the capacitor and resistor, these two values are set in such a way that the maximum amplitude VCC can be achieved within the particular sweep period like TS, where TS is less than the gating pulse period TG. Then only we can achieve this resistance and capacitance values to be chosen in such a way that it should have a max voltage VCC. Later, the output of this one is connected to the second transistor Q2, where the Q2 is connected in a configuration of emitter follower. We are assuming that the gain is unity. That's why whatever the input appeared at the base 2, the same will be appeared at the output as E2. That's why V0 is equal to VC because it is having unity gain and M drop follower. This is what we have seen in the last video. Now, in this video, after the application of triggering pulse, after the application of gating pulse, the capacitor charges. But once the gating pulse is removed, once the gating pulse is removed, that means that T is equal to TG, what happens? The capacitor has has to discharge that particular period and when it is going back to the original value is known as a retrace period sweep period retrace period retrace period so retrace period or retrace interval that is tr so at t is equal to tg at t is equal to tg nothing but when gating pulse is terminating the transistor q1 goes into conduction and the current IB1 is equal to VCC by RB. Q1 comes into conduction and immediately the current IB1 will be turned back to VCC by the input resistance RB. So hence the current again IB, IC1 starts flowing that is equal to all these are we have discussed before the application of gating pulse. Now the same will be reverted back when the gating pulse is removed. Okay, so this is the current flows into the collector Q1. So this current remains constant till the transistor goes into saturation. The current which is flowing IC1 through the transistor Q1, it is constant until and unless the transistor Q1 goes into saturation region. So since the Q1 is in on state, the capacitor C discharges through Q1. Now the C discharges. Discharges through the transistor Q1. So because of the emitter follower action, when VC falls, V output also falls by the same amount. And so the voltage across R remains constant. See here, once, let's go to the circuit diagram. When the transistor Q1 is in on state, previously whatever the charge that has been accumulated across the capacitor, now it discharges through the on transistor Q1. <coughs> okay, that means the input voltage for the transistor Q2 is discharging the same voltage will be appeared at the output because it is acting as a emitter follower with unity gain. Okay, so V0 also discharges. <coughs> V0 also discharges. So Vc is equal to V0 also having the same discharging path. Okay, so IC1 is equal to IR plus IA. IR plus IA. What is IA? IA is the current flowing through the capacitor. This is IA. When it is in discharging, the current is flowing back towards transistor Q1 is IA. I will write here. Where IA is nothing but discharging current uh, 
from capacitor okay and ia we can write it as ia is equal to ic1 minus ir that is equal to vcc by rb hfe minus vcc by r so since the discharging current of c ia is constant the voltage across c and hence the output voltage falls linearly to its initial value okay we have seen the waveform goes linearly it charges like this and after some time it again discharges linearly this linear action is due to the constant current the linear action is due to the constant current ia okay so if the retrace time tr if the retrace time tr if the retrace time is tr then the charge lost by the capacitor then the charge lost by the capacitor is equal to ia into tr ia into tr so ia tr by c is nothing but voltage across the capacitor nothing but sweep voltage okay that is vsc is nothing but sweep amplitude so tr is equal to our aim is to find tr retrace period tr is equal to c v s by ia so what is ia ia already we have calculated c into what is v uh, vs by what is ia vcc hfe by rb minus vcc by r this is ia we have calculated here this is ia so after c is discharged the collector current is now supplied completely to r and becomes established at the value of vcc by r so once the capacity is completely discharged what happens the complete current appeared at the resistance so it is nothing but vcc by r so the retrace time can be reduced by choosing a small value of rb however if rb is reduced this value if rb is reduced greatly then the collector current ic is equal to hfe into vcc by rb may reduce to a point where the transistor dissipation may be as excessive okay this is what the retrace period now the second point is the recovery process recovery process so during the entire interval t what is t t is equal to during the during the entire interval t is equal to tg plus tr tg is nothing but gating pulse when the gating pulse ended tr started hope you understand when the gating pulse ended tr started because after the removing of gating pulse capacitor starts discharging then the retracing period will be appeared so overall time period we can note it down as a tr plus tg as the total time period t the capacitor c1 discharges at a constant rate because the current i is equal to vcc by r through the capacitor it has remained constant okay so the capacitor c completely discharged completely discharged throw q1 on transistor with a current with a you can say constant current that's why linear action is there constant current 
i is equal to vcc by r so it would have lost a charge like vcc into t by r hence at the time t when the voltage across c and at the base q2 returns to its value when t less than 0 the voltage across capacitor c1 is smaller than it was in the beginning the sweep voltage so beginning of sweep voltage is slightly different compared to the after the ending of the sweep voltage that is the voltage across capacitor so the maximum recovery time t1 for c1 the maximum recovery time t1 for c1 can be calculated as can be calculated as charge lost charge lost by the capacitor C1 in the time T is VCC by R into T. This is the total amount of charge that is lost across the capacitor during the interval T. Charge gained by the capacitor, charge gained by capacitor C1 in minimum recovery time, recovery time that means whatever the charge it lost previously now it takes the time to charge back to get it back. So T1 is <coughs> VEE by RE into T1. So VCC by R into T is equal to VEE is the voltage we are applying at the emitter or we can say at the resistor RE. RE into T1. So T1 is equal to VCC by VEE into RE by R into T. Okay, so th this is the amount of time taken by the capacitor to revert back to the original value like the uh, before the application of gating pulse. Okay, see where VE is applied here. VE has to be applied here. Min uh, uh, sorry, minus surplus it is plus VE, I think. Sorry, minus VE only. Minus VE. Okay, this is the place. It is connected to ground. There is no connection here. When the capacitor wants to get back to the original value, we have to make this change like minus VE should be applied at the resistor RE in the emitter follower kind of configuration. So that the recovery time is taking place and T1 is equal to VCC by VE into RE by R into the time taken by the capacitor to lost its charge T. Okay, this is about the time-based generator in bootstrap configuration. Thank you.